In the lesson before this, we looked at the two general parts of every atom. Every atom has a dense center called a nucleus, and then an electron cloud that's not very dense at all around the outside. In fact, the electron cloud is made up of mostly empty space with a few electrons buzzing around here and there. In that lesson, we also learned that there are three different types of particles that are found in an atom. Protons and neutrons are in the nucleus, whereas the electrons are around the outside. In this lesson, we're going to start looking at the properties and the functions of each of those three individual types of particle that make up every atom. And in particular, we're going to start with the two types of particles that are found in the nucleus. And the very first one we're going to take a look at is the proton, which is perhaps the most important particle that makes up any atom because it's the one that defines the type of atom that you're dealing with. We'll get more on that later. In this lesson, we're going to look at, first of all, the properties of protons, the function of protons, and then what happens if you change the number of protons in an atom. Let's get started by looking at a model atom once again, and we're going to take a look one more time at the atom of oxygen. Oxygen, we said, is one of the two most common atoms that are found in living things, but oxygen actually has another characteristic that's important. It's one of the two most common atoms that are found in the Earth's crust making up rocks. So oxygen is an extremely important atom in this created world. Not only does it make up all living things, but it also makes up a lot of the non-living things because it's one of the two most common atoms in rocks. Now again, let's peel away the surface of oxygen and look inside. And inside oxygen, you see that there's that electron cloud where the electrons are buzzing around. But then there's the part we're going to be taking a look more closely at, the nucleus, which is the dense center made up of protons and neutrons. We're going to take a look in particular at what the properties of the protons are. So here are the characteristics that protons have, the, the properties that they possess as we study what they're like inside an atom. We find that protons are located in the nucleus, that they have a one plus positive charge. Here's what that means. Every proton in the nucleus is going to attract one of anything that has an opposite charge. And we find that protons have exactly the opposite charge as electrons. So each proton in the nucleus is going to be able to attract one electron with its positive charge. And in addition to being in the nucleus and having a positive charge, we also notice that protons have a mass of one atomic mass unit. They have mass, that's the key. They have a significant amount of mass in the atom. We're going to find that one of the other particles also has a significant amount of mass, the exact same as a proton, and one of them doesn't really have any mass at all. But protons do. They have one atomic mass unit of mass. The function of protons, what do they do for an atom? Well, protons are the things that give atoms their identity. The number of protons determines what type of atom you're dealing with. For example, if an atom only has one proton, it's hydrogen. If it has three protons in its nucleus, regardless of how many neutrons and electrons it has, if it has three protons, it's lithium. If it has eight protons, like this atom here does, regardless of how many neutrons and electrons, if it has eight protons, it's oxygen. What happens if an oxygen atom gains or loses a proton? Let's say a nuclear reaction happens and this oxygen atom gains an extra proton. I just added a proton to this oxygen atom. Well, here's the deal that oxygen atom is going to affect the way the entire atom behaves and the atom is going to get bigger. And it's not going to be oxygen anymore. It is no longer going to be the same colorless, odorless gas that's important in sustaining life and that's found in living things and rocks throughout the Earth's crust. It's going to be an entirely different substance. In fact, it changes to this substance, fluorine, which is a toxic greenish yellow gas that if you breathe in even a small amount it will react inside your body with your lungs and you will die. That's how important the protons are. If you change their number you change the atom to an entirely different atom. 
Now, why is it that we don't just make a whole bunch of atoms of the elements that we want? Like, why can't we just add a bunch of protons to tin, which is an element that's pretty common on the Earth, and make it into gold, which is something that's extremely valuable? Well, the reason we don't do that is because it's very difficult to change the number of protons in the nucleus. It's not something that's easy for us to do. Nuclear reactions don't happen as easily as chemical reactions do. Now, chemical reactions aren't even involved with the nucleus. We'll be talking about those with another part of the atom. Right now, just understand that protons are important because protons are in the nucleus, they have a one plus charge, they contribute to the mass of the atom, and they give the atom its identity.